Hey everyone, um, just wanted to come today, it's been a little while, and uh, kind of share the message that uh, we had today, um, and I hope this uh, camera's focused right, anyhow, um, the main thing is that you're here, um, but anyhow, we started out this morning, my family, um, in John 10, verse 9 and Jesus said I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly let that passage sink in more more abundantly Uh, that's what Jesus said I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep and and as as we're reading here I want you to think today's religion um, and and trust me if, if you go to church and you're into that and that's that's what you want to do with your family um, just don't lie about it. it's not God's church it is a it is a collection of folks that want to get together. It, it's a club like an American Legion. Your topic is different, um, and I, I would I would <laughs> adjure you to keep them keep them honest, because many things and ninety plus percent of the things outside the reading of the Bible that their interpretations are lies. And they'll not be excused for that. Jesus said, if the blind follow the blind, shall they not both fall into the ditch? Did he say that the, if, if the, the deceived are following the deceivers, that the deceiver would go to hell, but the one being deceived would be held unaccountable? No, he didn't say that. So you, you've got to be smart and understand the word of God. So Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and this, this Jesus is not talking down the line of some religious pastor or priest set up years later. He is not focusing on that. He's talking about people that are being deceived by man. When the disciples in Matthew 24, read it yourself, get, a, get accustomed to understanding the word, and reach it out to God. He said, when you pray, go pray in secret. Go into your closet. That's not what's being taught today in any of these so-called churches. This is not the church of God. This is not the one that Jesus set up if you if you want the one that Jesus set up, if you're into that, and that's what you think happened, then the Catholics have a better chance of being closer than all the other Christian denominations from the Catholic. Because at least they go off of the power of the words of Peter, which we'll explain here, that they take it as permanent authority. And that is exactly what these words, they try to make these words out to be. So when we go here, and I'm, we're going to get into that, but about the hireling. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd. So let's, let's just fantasize for a moment here that, that the church is legit. How many churches decided when the government said, hey, shut them down? Shut down your churches. And how many complied? I don't know too many. There was some Baptist ones that were on the news. There was some, I, I think even a Methodist in, in Texas. I, I'm not sure, but I didn't hear anything about a UPCI organization, which, which many of you, like me, ha have, have fell head over heels as the only truth of God. 
But I know when God brings you out of that, when he, he opens your mind like he did mine, opens your eyes, you'll, you'll see these things as well. And I have hope to that. But he said, a hireling fleeth. So if they were so soft in their faith that they preach over and over and over and over again, <laughs> that we're going to stand. And Jesus said that you have to die for him, that you would have to give your life for him for this gospel's sake and they preach that they will and that you should and I should and and but it didn't happen they couldn't as much as stand up against the government to not shut down the services that they so endeared and thought is part of your salvation so when you look at those things these people are hirelings they're they're going to save their families first and, and and I don't care what you argue. The fact is, is they preach different than saying, oh, well, it's their family. They should put their family first. That ain't what they preach. They say you're going to the kingdom of God. And, and, and you have to leave. And Jesus said it. If he isn't more important than your family, he's not important at all. That's his words. So I just want to bring this out. I, I am not, if you, if you attend a church, if you attend your church house club, just know that's what it is. Don't go running out here telling people that they must come to church, that they must come to your building, that they must uh, do the, the all these things that you do and please a man, a pastor or a priest, to be saved. You are a liar. And I will call you out right now. You are a liar. You are not supported by the words of Jesus Christ, nor the gift of the Holy Ghost that he sent back to lead and guide us into truth. So that's where you're at. So I'm not taking away the fact that there are some good men, good women, good families that truly, if they knew the interpretation of the scripture would do it different. But they have been sucked in, deceived by the interpretation of an organization that wants to grow physically and earthly. They want the masses to come. They want to be greater. They want more money. They want more power. They have got their hierarchy set up. They, they've got their pride. It's this preacher, that preacher, and oh, you got to hear this one, that one. And Jesus isn't even hardly to be found anymore in these places. That's a fact. And Jesus said, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. You know who he was talking about here? The Gentiles. Make no mistake. But these are areas where they take their own liberty, take their own will to manipulate scripture to their organizational beliefs. And let's let's look at this. Verse 27. Well, here, let's let's go, let's go to verse 24. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I told you, and you believed not. He said, the works that I do in my Father's name, I only know one name that Jesus gave of himself and his work, and it was Jesus Christ. It was his Father's name because God applied that name to the work that he did in the flesh of this body that he chose to be manifested in and to be born of a woman. Okay, so let's go on. I told you, and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. Now let me tell you something. All you people that want to talk about church and a pastor and all, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Listen, Jesus never put plural out there. He never said, the, the chosen that I'm going to select, you're going to have to come under submission to them. You're going to have to listen to them to be able to obey me. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and another they will not follow. 
That's including man, people. That's including man. And he said, I and my father are one. So there you go. Um, I could go on and on. And 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 but but some of the things I want, want you to want you to see is that let's let's talk about so back to the point where Peter, as I said about mentioned about the Catholic, um, if you were to look at if the Lord and he told Peter feed my sheep. Remember that? Now this is what they want you to believe. This is this is what they try okay to uh and again you can find that in john too stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers so you're going to follow only christ you're going to follow god through his spirit of jesus christ that he sent back which he said i will comfort you it will lead you into all truth okay he said i am the door by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal, for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. Okay? We, we got that. And when you look at First John, I'm just going to cover this, get it out of the way. Not that it's not important. It is very important. Um, First John 2. 26 these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you that try to draw you away from Jesus Christ and this is predominantly what a church will do but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth or liveth in you that's what Jesus said I am with you he told his disciples but when I leave and the comforter comes I will be in you I will be your onboard navigator, living in you. Okay? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Christ. Okay? So he said, but the anointing which you have received of him, what's the anointing? It's transparent, or it, 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 it's interconnected. Uh, the anointing, it was an oil in the Old Testament. It was showing that it would be the Spirit of God. So when someone was anointed, they were walking in the Spirit of God Almighty. And, and the anointing comes and they speak of the Holy Ghost. So that's what the anointing is. And that is also the preacher. A man is not labeled a preacher. It is the Holy Ghost that comes upon the man. Okay? So again, he said, But the anointing which ye have received of him... Ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. He said, this is the truth, and it's not a lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide or live in him. Who? Jesus. So let's, let's go back a little bit where I was telling you about the, the Catholics. So when, when Jesus told Peter, and he reminded him three times because he wanted to draw his attention back to where Jesus, where uh, Peter had, had forsaken Jesus three times, denied him. And Jesus wanted us to see and know that for the simple fact and reason that man, no matter how close they were with Jesus, will never be able to live without him, Jesus. And so, and this is true for the Holy Ghost. That's why Jesus sent back his spirit. Because he knows man cannot. And then when you get this laughable, damnable sayings and statements that a pastor is your covering, there's only one covering for mankind. That is the blood of Jesus Christ. And for them to even step up and think that they're anybody, when 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 Peter and 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 when they would walk down the road, the Bible said just a just a shadow would heal people. That was the anointing of God. And these people would fall down and worship before them. 
And Peter himself would say, stop, get up. I'm a man just like you. We are men just like you. We are still fallible. We have feelings like you. We are tempted like you. And he rebuked them. He said, only one. All this jives with one shepherd. And y'all want to say your pastor is your shepherd? That's a lie from hell. That is a lie from hell. Jesus never turned this authority or submission back over to man. Nowhere will you find that Jesus did that. And when he did do something, it was for a specific purpose. And let me give you two examples. Take Jesus' mother, Mary. She was overshadowed by what? The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, and the seed of the Holy Ghost through Jesus was born a babe in a manger. She played part of the physical sacrifice of God in the name of Jesus to be born so God could have a vessel to feel no hunger, thirst, be betrayed, be be abused and physically uh, cut to pieces and, and experience all these things of loneliness so he could better relate to us and he took that body and it's great of a moment has uh, as Mary was highly favored among all women that's what was said the angels visited her that did not secure Mary to a deity she was not uh, transformed into a being of authority that was not afforded her her purpose was that one thing to bear Jesus and to raise him as a child and and she was not given any specialness Jesus hardly uh, even even said much about his mother and when it was you know when he died on the cross and 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 jesus said john behold mary thy mother your mother now take care of her and 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 jesus said i must be about my father's business and it wasn't a business of joseph so when you look at that but the catholics they they have taken that with Mary being highly favored among all women, they have made that into a deity form of worship, of, of graven image hanging from, from uh, their, their mirrors, rearview mirrors in their cars, uh, set on their, their dashboards. Um, they have made that a deity. They, they do a rosary. They do all these things around Mary. So they have idolized someone who God chose for a moment and a special purpose to use and they've made them out to be a God a graven image and when you look at that we, we go to Peter and Jesus told Peter feed my sheep now this is where you you church folk you religious you have allowed them to take those words and you could look at it up, look and feed you could look it up in strong's exhaustive uh, or not strong's but uh, vines uh, expository you can look at that and 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 they they go through there and they say oh yeah it's to care uh, they they say it's authority uh, to care for uh, to lead and, and, and to uh, there there was like four four things that Jesus taught against that they're saying that's what Jesus meant and this is where you get all these churches and their hierarchy and all this this uh, craziness okay and it is craziness because Jesus <laughs> I've, I've, I've this has been my candy stick Matthew 20 25 26 uh, Luke 22, 25, and 26. Um, Mark, I believe it's 10, 43, 45. Um, 
You're not going to be like the world. You're not going to have positions. We're not dealing with hierarchy in my kingdom, Jesus said. So Jesus' own words. But uh, you, you think that, that, that uh, an, an epistle or a letter to a church by Paul or anyone else, even Peter, you, you, you think that overrides what Jesus said. You think that now that you have to be submitted under a pastor, when, when fivefold ministry, oh, that's quoted all over the board for this religious uh, realm. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, uh, there's, there was uh, uh, prophets, apostles, uh, pastors, uh, teachers, and evangelists. You say that's the fivefold, that's what it's all built around. No, that's the hierarchy, right? And, and you, you say that. And that, that. If you interpret that scripture the way that it's administered in churches today, it's a lie from hell. That is not what Jesus said, and if if that is not erroneous, it's only out for one one time. You're only going to find it in Scripture, one place. Now they like to drag in, oh well, the pastor is the elder. Well, that got another problem, because now I have elders in a church who is not the pastor. So when you talk pastor, he is the supreme being. He's the supreme authority overall. So you're, all, this whole setup is a pyramid, and it's putting man back in the Tower of Babel. And if y'all aren't drawing those, seeing those things for what they really are, then, then you're not seeing Jesus. So I, I, I must tell you. And so when you look at that, when, when Jesus said, feed my sheep. This was that one-time prophecy, one-time prophecy, where on the day of Pentecost, because Jesus said, it's coming a time that the words that you speak, he said, who does men say that I am? And, and they said, oh, well, some say you're Elias and Jonas and, and one of the prophets. And, and Jesus said, but who do you say I am? And Peter stood up and said, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. And when he said that, Jesus said, Ah, flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father which is in heaven. You've got it, buddy. And he said, You are Peter. You are the stone. You, not, now get this, people do take that physically and say Peter was the stone, and that's how the Catholic branched off, okay? Which are more right than a lot of the nominal churches um, that changed from the Catholic. So when you look at that and you say, okay, well, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus' church is one church. So what church was he talking about? So upon this rock, upon this revelation of who I am, me being the stone, me being the rock of your salvation, Okay, so Jesus said, upon this revelation, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And what he was prophesying was that day when Pentecost would fully come. And the men and brethren, oh, what shall we do? We, Jesus, and Peter said, these are not drunken as you suppose, but this is the third hour of the day. Amen. And he went on to say, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he quoted Joel 2.28. And when you look at that, and, and you go back and you say, okay, well, where did that come from? Is that really right? And you could go right now to John 3, not 16, that comes later, but John 3, 3 through 5, and you'll see Jesus talking to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus said, hey, how do I be saved? And Jesus said, you must be born of the water and of the Spirit. If you're not, you can't see or enter the kingdom of God. He said, you must be born again. And even Nicodemus was like, wow, how do I be born again of my mother? And, and Jesus said, you're born of the Spirit. 
So you have to be born again. You have to be reset through the name of Jesus, being filled with his spirit to have that communion back to God in heaven. And it's through the blood and the covering of Jesus and through his name, faith in his name, that is your reconciliation back to God. And you, once you have that, you now can be just like Adam and Eve in the garden before sin. And God can walk through the garden. He can wake you up in the morning. And he can talk to you as plain as he did with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And that, my friend, is Jesus. That is our reconciliation. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope of our calling. And that preacher is the Holy Ghost. And if you have found yourself, if you have repented, been baptized in Jesus' name, you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, you are now the sons of God. You now have the preacher. You have the anointing that lives in you. You have power to overcome sin. And that is the greatest thing. And you have all these folks that wants to seek after miracles, tongues, and all these other things. And, and, and you want, you got competition in these churches, so-called, and, and, and they want to be better and bigger and badder and, you know, more close to God. And they want their name lifted up and look at uh, Johnny Godair and all these other preachers that the, the latest ones on the circuit. And, and that's what it is. Do you not know that even the devil can release people from his spirit to trick you? Do you not know that the deception of man is so great and it's the most powerful force in the world? It's not the devil. Because when the apostles asked him, Lord, what's the last days look like? How are we going to know when you're coming? Read it. Matthew 24, read it. He'll tell you in about the third verse. I said, what, what's going to be the signs? He said, take heed. Be smart. Don't be fooled. Don't let man deceive you. They'll say, hey, here's Christ. Lo, there's Christ. Follow him there. Follow him there. Hey, listen, I got the plan. I've got the church. This is the church. This is the organization. This is the belief system. Follow me. Come to our church. And, and let me tell you something. As, as I told my kids and my wife today, you're going to go to a church and say, oh, I felt the love. I felt so much love. You know what you're feeling? These people wanting you to join their cause, their belief. And to some of them, they truly believe it's God, right? I'm not putting people down. Those that are deceiving you and know it, there's a hot hell burning waiting for them. And many of them have been told and just, oh, they're too proud. They're, they, they're bigger than you. You can't tell them. I talked to a pastor three times and his, his attitude, I said, see, that is exactly that spirit, that attitude that keeps people from being saved. I said, that very look and that reaction is that you are not, hmm, you can't tell me. I'm above you. I, I'm, I'm considered a pastor. And you're nobody. You just came to this church. You're nobody. And you could, <laughs> you, you, you're telling me what to do, okay? You got the handle on God and I don't, right? Oh, yeah, right. Well, I preach that you aren't going to get anything from God unless God comes and tells me. And that's the way we believe it. So if you want to be in that cult... If you want to be in, in, in that devilish, well, actually, the worst, worst thing is humanix, humanistic, <laughs> slave-type church. You stay there. That's all right. I, I'm not going to make fun of you. It is what it is. I preach my heart. I preach what God has shown me, and I'll continue doing that. And don't, don't, don't feel sorry for me. I'm going to be just fine. 
And I hope that one day that your eyes will be open, that the scales like Paul fell off, as he proclaimed. Um, but yeah, and, and many of you know that if Jesus didn't say it, and if it doesn't jive with Jesus, as I say so many times, then you must question it. Because his words, and his words only, not some so-called anointed pastor, not some so-called apostle, prophet, can change anything Jesus said. But the Pope believes they can, because they believe in that Peter was given that eternal power, and he passed it on to another man, and that's what their church is really built on. But all the rest of the denominal churches say that they're not even following the real Jesus, that they've made up their own Jesus, okay? That's what the rest of the church churches say. That's what the rest of the religious world say about the Catholic. But <laughs> you got to give them some credit here because you kind of believe that too because you think that pastor can, can be handed the baton because somebody said he was called, but we're all called. And the only preacher is the Holy Ghost. And the only anointed is the Holy Ghost. Those that live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, you know, I could go on and on, folks. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get you feel bad. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to let you read the Word of God. Understand it as Jesus has put it. Make your election and calling sure. Question everything. The Bible said, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. And when you find that communion with the Holy Ghost, then you can be at peace. And you won't have all these burdens that you felt rolled away when you received the Holy Ghost. And, and, and you won't have those lingering. But what has happened is is, is people, and this is what I told, told my family today, and, and even I was just told today that, well, by my son, he's like, Dad, but all your kids receive the Holy Ghost in a church. Well, <laughs> yes, okay. That doesn't mean that's the only place God can be found when the only place that they would be getting the Holy Ghost. Because we're conditioned... To think when God speaks to us, we must go to a church. Well, that's why it happened like that. It's not because God only did it in a church. It, it happened because when God speaks to us, we feel compelled by what we've been taught and what the, the mainstream common way of thinking is, is that we must go to a church building. But that's not true. Not at all. So I assure you, God can fill you in the whole, with the Holy Ghost in your closet. So God bless you, and I appreciate y'all listening. And uh, we're going to stop here, and there'll be more. I appreciate it. And God bless you, and, and find the Lord, and get that strong cable of communion with Jesus. Amen.